when I first met Prabhupada in 75, we were, I was down in uh, Texas at that time, in Dallas, and uh, he was there. And then he came, he came to Montreal. He came to Montreal and, uh, you know, Srila Prabhupada had this real energy that when you came close to him, then you knew that there was, uh, you know, something special. It's like if you come close to fire, then you feel the heat. Mm -hmm. So when you come close to real saintly person, then you can, you can feel his devotion, his love for Krishna. <laughs> And uh, we followed him because uh, we actually were and are convinced that Prabhupada also had what he was talking about. He wasn't speaking about something uh, theoretical. He was, go ahead. He was talking about, he was talking about developing a love for Krishna. He knew that Prabhupada had we can see it by his, uh, his personal, sometimes on rare occasions when he exhibited symptoms of ecstasy, but we also saw that how could somebody who, you know, coming to America, he has no money. I mean, he has zero. Mm -hmm. And uh, establish a movement with, you know, a hundred temples uh, and restaurants and farms and you know, 5,000 followers. Um, it, uh, that you have to be empowered to do that. But that empowerment has to come from Krishna. And devotees who are who really were willing to just follow Prabhupada, whatever he said, then you know we did it. Prabhupada said, you know, go to the city and start the temple. So then the devotee would go alone, and that, by that order that Prabhupada gave, devotees were empowered. And, it's like here in the UK, we sent uh, three, three couples, and uh, you know they met the Beatles. You know, I made a record, and they were on top of the charts, and uh, they became very famous. Ultimately, we had the manor and temples, and it. Prabhupada was able, not only was it that he himself was doing something, but he was uh, inspiring and empowering others. And, uh, if they followed exactly what he said and did, then they would also be successful. Mm -hmm. That empowerment is, um, we shouldn't strive for that, or should we? What? To be empowered. If we wanted to function a certain way, Hmm. Some shukta. Go with the price. Shukta. Did I get it? Oh, yes, you have. This is shukta. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, I didn't know. I thought it was uh, steamed vegetable. Oh. I didn't taste it. Mm -hmm. No. That power, Krishna Shakti Vinay Nahatava Tavartana. That power comes from Krishna that empowerment. And uh, in order to do something, everybody has to be empowered. So Jeff Bezos is empowered. But he's empowered because of his karma. Mm -hmm. You know, why aren't we all successful as he? But his empowerment is for a material end. 
and it's because he has good karma from his last life. Therefore, he was empowered to become so wealthy because ordinary people don't do that. But he's using it for an ordinary purpose, going to the moon and making space rockets. I'm just going to make the same mess of other planets that they've made of the Earth. But uh, to spread Krishna consciousness is a different thing. But you inspire people to buy from you, okay. If you inspire people to give up everything, to actually surrender to God, and to know who God is, that does require a certain empowerment, another type of empowerment. And uh, without that, you can't, uh, you can't get the results. But it's very difficult. All of a sudden, we're telling people, you know, in an atheistic world, it's going very, very much in the direction of the atheistic world. That God is a person, that is a cowboy boy, that, you know, he, he milks cows in the day of veganism. And, uh, and still, people will accept what you say if. Uh, if you have that, uh, what's it called? If you have that, uh, um, um, what happens when you write a uh, letter saying that uh, uh, someone can act on your behalf? What's that called? Power of attorney. Power of attorney. Oh, yeah, when you have Krishna's power of attorney. I would love to learn preaching. Really? That's the best thing to do, is to tell others to be Krishna. I mean, like she was, spent how many years in the UK? Ten. Ten years, just traveling around and selling Prabhupada's books in all kinds of places. Air shows, rock concerts, Really? In a sari? On the street. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, and you see that but uh, you go on the street, you stop somebody, you start talking to them. And this is the last thing that people wanted to do when, you know, they head out to go shopping is to stop, to talk to a Hare Krishna, get a Bhagavad Gita, and so on, and what to speak of part with their money. But they do it, and often they don't even know why they're doing it, but Krishna's in everybody's heart, so they become, by the dissociation of devotees, and it was very interesting how mm. I got here because um, I, I've seen Hare Krishna's on the street and also on Hampstead Heath when during the lockdown they were there every day. And I was on the Heath every day too when I saw them. Uh, Hampstead Heath. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very drawn to going and joining the Kirtan, but I never did because for some reason I was scared of the social things, you know, Nancy. But it was a it was a thing, you know, but I didn't think too much. Hmm. Then it was, was it, please? it was only afterwards, um, two years later, like a year later, probably. Um, well, two months ago, a friend completely unrelated to Krishna consciousness. Send me an invitation to Jamashmi. So yeah, I joined two months ago. Mm. Uh, and I came to the manor. And it was just that, that was just it, you know? <laughs> and um, because me and Eve actually met um, with, you know, Sadhguru. Mm -hmm. You know about him? I heard. 
Well, he teaches this particular particular type of I mean, hatha yoga mainly kriya, <laughs> but that's how we met, and um, I was I was very serious about once I stepped onto spirituality, I was very serious about it. So whatever he said, I just follow and just do it. And um, when I came to the manor, I was really trying to find it, like the first day, you know, trying to find a spot. Oh my god, I just woke up, I need to do the yoga. <laughs> but I just, the, the whole program was so full, you know, I was also doing some service. And I just thought, oh, no, okay, let me, let me just like see that what this is, and let me just see and try this um, process. And it was pretty magical, actually, how the chanting can do the same to you as when you're doing all the practice and even more actually for some reason so I just continue to do it yeah you have to do more chanting yoga you can regulate your senses but by chanting you develop a love for Krishna and uh, it takes time you have to be dedicated to it. And when one has love for God, then one can associate with him. So, Krishna will associate only with those who have love for him. Everything is very wonderful. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very nice.